Hello there, I'm Lionel Faber, a developer at Mainsafe. If you haven't heard of us before, we are a team that's building a product called the Safe Network. The Safe Network is a decentralized network that aims to solve the problems of security, privacy and freedom in today's internet. If you're new to the Safe Network, a good place to start is the Safe Network or Tech website. Here you will find a lot of information on how it works, what our fundamentals are, and how to get started. You can check out the currently live Alpha 2 test network using the Safe Browser. This video will help you get started. Recently, we have announced the support for native Android application development using Java or Kotlin. A massive number of mobile devices are being used in the world today and more and more applications are being built every day. So this is a huge step forward for us. This release includes two packages, a safe app Android and a safe app Android dev package. The documentation for the APIs exposed by these libraries are available on docs.mainsafe.net slash safeappjava. This release also includes a tutorial application that demonstrates the basic concepts of authentication, mock and non-mock networks, and basic operations on mutable data. In order to find out more about authentication, the types of networks available, and the data types, you can visit hub.safediv.org. On this developer hub, you will find an Android tutorial which will help developers get started by building their first decentralized application for the safe network. An application can authenticate itself to the network through the process of self-authentication. This is done through the Safe Authenticator mobile application. We have released an updated proof of concept through which applications can use the latest API to authenticate themselves to the network. This application can be downloaded from the releases page. Now let us see how you can get started by building your first decentralized application for the safe network. For this tutorial, you will need an installation of Git, an Android development setup, and of course, an Android device or emulator. The safe app Android packages only support devices with API 24 and above and ARM ABI V7A or x86 underscore 60 for support. For the purpose of this tutorial, we have provided a boilerplate code into which we will be adding safe logic for our application. Let's get started by cloning the safe getting started Android repository. We can now check out to the boilerplate branch. Import the project into an IDE of your choice. For this tutorial, we will be using Android Studio, which is pretty standard for Android application development. For easier switching between mock and non mock, we have defined build variants which is a feature in Android Studio. For more information, follow the link provided. In our project, we have defined the dependencies such that the mock version will use the safe app Android dev package and the non mock version will use the safe app Android package. This is to facilitate easy switching between mock and non mock flavors. As mentioned before, the API documentation is available to reference any of the functions that are exposed by the libraries. Let's get started with authentication. In order to authenticate, we have to generate an authentication request. For this purpose, we will need an instance of app, app exchange info, and a list of container permissions. In this application, we will not need any additional container permissions, hence we will pass an empty array. In order to find out more information about the different containers available, you can follow 
discover page. The authentication request is generated in the generate auth URL function in the safe to do class. This app variable is already available. Let us now implement the rest of the function. It is important to import the required packages. We can now generate an auth URL using the constructor. Before calling any of the APIs, we should first load the native libraries into memory. This is done in the get instance function. As you can see, if the libraries are not yet loaded, the libraries are loaded into memory using client.load. To send the request to the authenticate application, the auth request that we have created is encoded and prepended with safe auth colon slash slash app ID. This is the URI that will be opened to send the request to the authenticator. At any point in the tutorial, you can refer the function definitions in the safe getting started Android repositories master branch. For mock authentication, the boilerplate code contains the required code to authenticate your application to the mock network. Once we have authenticated, we can get the response that comes in the form app ID colon slash slash app ID and the encoded auth response. We can strip out the app IDs and use this encoded auth response to establish a connection to the safe network. Let us implement the connect function that is available in the safe API class. Here, we are initializing the app application ID. We are decoding the encoded response from the authenticator. And we are making sure that this is an authentication response. After casting the decode result object to an auth response object, we can call the client.connect API to establish a connection to the network. Congratulations, your application is now connected to the safe network. A disconnection event is very common in a mobile devices. For example, when your mobile device loses its connection to the network, this is handled by the safe app Android library. We can define a function that needs to be called when disconnection event happens. This is defined in the safe to do act in the to do activity class. As you can see, on disconnected, we are showing a snack bar that will show a disconnected message to the user. We can call the session.setOnDisconnectListener which will set a listener for this disconnect event. This is done as soon as our application is connected to the safe network. Now that our application is connected to the network, let us perform some data operations using mutable data. Mutable data is a key value store that is either at a specific address or a random address. In this application, 
we will be generating mutable data at a random address and using it to store our application's data. This is done in the new mutable data function in the safe API class. Let us define this function. In our application, we will be storing instances of task and total list as values in the mutable data. The key value pairs in mutable data are byte arrays. Our boilerplate code has the provision of serializing and deserializing these objects to be stored into the mutable data. In the code, we will be using instances of native handle in a number of places. A native handle is a pointer to complex objects in native code. The safe app Android libraries have native code that are written in Rust. Since we have randomly generated mutable data, this mutable data does not exactly exist on the network. Hence, we must put the mutable data to the network with a list of permissions and an initial list of entries. This can be done using the mdata.put API. In our application, we are inserting a set of permissions for the application using its public sign key and without any initial entries. This can be done using the MD entries empty constant. This initial put operation is done in the insert permissions function in the safe API class. Once this mutable data is put to the network, we can encrypt key value pairs and insert them as entries by mutating the existing mutable data. This is done in the add entry function of the safe API class. As you can see, we are encrypting the entry key, the value, inserting the key value encrypted key value pair into an action handle and mutating the mutable data in the network. Once these encrypted key value pairs are onto the network, we can read these key value pairs using the list entries API. This is done in the get entries function of the safe API class. To get the entries, we first get an entries handle using the mutable data info and using this entries handle, we can get the list of entries. This list of entries is a list of M data entry. We have encrypted and stored serialized objects of to do list and task in our application. So once we get the list of entries, we can iterate through them, decrypt them, and deserialize them into a to do list object. This deserialization function is available in the boilerplate code. As we have mentioned, the values that are stored in the mutable data are encrypted. In order to decrypt these values, we will use the mdata.decrypt API. This is done in the decrypt entry value in the safe API class. Now that we can insert and read entries from the mutable data, let's see how we can update them. Every entry in the mutable data has a numeric value associated with it. This is a mutable data entry version. Every time an update operation is applied to the entry, the numeric version is incremented by one. This is to ensure that only one mutation is applied when there are multiple requests. Updating a mutable data entry is done in the update entry function of the safe API class.
as you can see the, the update function takes the encrypted key the new value which is encrypted and the version we have to increment the version by one before passing it to the update function in our application this version increment is done before calling the update entry function now for mutating the entries the entry will be updated in the mutable data to delete an entry in the mutable data it the entry isn't exactly deleted but the value section of the mutable data entry becomes blank and the numeric version is incremented by one so technically it's just an update operation where the newly new value is blank that's why in our implementation of the application we are filtering blank entries using a condition before we decrypt and deserialize the value in the mutable data entry this delete operation is done in the delete entry function in the safe api class Again, the version needs to be incremented by 1 while passing to the delete function. In our implementation, this version increment is done before calling the delete entry function. Now, we have successfully completed insert, read, delete and update operations on mutable data. But wait, we have been performing all these on mutable data that was randomly generated. The application will not know the location of this mutable data. So the next time the application starts, it will fetch a new random mutable data and all the previous entries will be lost. This can be overcome by using the application's own container. The app's own container is mutable data that it is aware of. So we can store information about the mutable data that holds our application data inside the app's own container. So the next time the application starts, it will first check its own container for information about existing application data. If it exists, it will fetch the data and reuse it. If the data does not exist, it will generate a new random mutable data and store its information in the app's own container. This is done in the get sections from app container function. In this function, we are getting the application containers info and we are getting the value stored at the encrypted key. If this value does not exist, we are initializing the application data and storing it inside the app container info. If the data does exist, we are decrypting the data and deserializing it to fetch the application's data. Now let us run the application to see how it works. We are now running the mock debug build variant of the application. This means the application is now using mock routing. While creating an Android emulator for development, please make sure that the emulator is x86-64. The safe app Android package does not support Android emulators with x86 architecture. The application has started. This button will perform more authentication. We can now add a section and add entries to the list. The checkbox will perform the update operation and update the status of the task in the mutable data entry. The delete button will delete the mutable data 
entry from the list of entries. In the mock version of the network, there is an API that will allow you to mock a disconnection event. This simulate disconnection option will trigger the disconnection event and we, are, we can now see the snack bar that we have coded to the application. We cannot perform any operations while we are disconnected from the network. The reconnect button will call the reconnect API and re-establish the application's connection to the network. If you have made it this far, congratulations, you have built your first native Android application for the SAFE network. In order to move from mock routing to the Alpha 2 test network, you will need to authenticate using the SAFE Authenticator mobile Android application. This can be downloaded from the SAFE Authenticator mobile repositories releases page. You can install this application by dragging and dropping the APK into your Android emulator. After opening the application and logging into the authenticator using your safe network credentials, you can see the list of applications that was previously authenticated. Note that you will need to update your IP address on invite.madesafe.net. For more information, see this topic. We can now change the build variant of the application to non-mock. This feature is enabled because we have used the build variants feature of Android Studio in our build.gradle file. Now running the application will run the non-mock version of the application. Clicking the authenticate button will redirect us to the safe authenticator where we can either allow or deny the application's auth request. This is done through the safe auth protocol. After authorization, the authenticator redirects the user to the Todo application through a URI of the following format. This URI is registered as an Intel filter in the application's manifest file. Any URI with the following scheme, when opened, will launch the application with the URI as intent data. The following code will fetch the data and establish the connection to the network. We can now add data which will send and receive data from the Alpha 2 network. Congratulations, your application now sends and receives data from the Alpha 2 network. I hope this tutorial has been helpful for building your first native Android application for SAFE. If you have any questions regarding the SAFE network, head over to the SAFE network forum at safenetforum.org. We have a wild community who is always ready to help you. For any of the development related questions, head over to forum.safedev.org. Thank you for watching and happy development!